Good morning YouTube, today we're gonna to talk about the projects that we've got for the new house and of course, the new garage. So are you recording all of the nefarious activities? If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan and this is my new garage. And this channel is all about the supercar ownership experience. And I know some of you are gonna say, oh, but this is a garage and house video, this isn't supercars. Well, part of owning a supercar is obviously you wanna put the supercar somewhere that is cool and usually that means a cool garage. So lots of supercar owners we know, and of course lots of the gearheads we know, love having a cool garage. So we're gonna talk about that. And then we're gonna kind of show a little bit of the house stuff too, because people said, hey, we wanna see that as well. We've got moved in and we got a lot of work to do. <sighs> it's gonna be exhausting. We've got tons and tons of stuff to do. So let's talk about all that and we'll go through it and I'll kind of explain the plan. And then today we're actually gonna do a little bit of work on the garage. Yeah, it's nothing big. So. Anyway, real quick, if you guys want to support us, and we could use your support, please go visit normalguyssupercar.com. There you can buy parts and services for your car, including stuff like garage flooring and lights. We have those in the garage section. So go check it out. You can use the code NGS10. It hooks you up with 10% off most of the things we sell. Also, we have some cars for sale through our dealership and new supercars, so go check that out. So the video for the new house just came out the other day, and I've already gotten a lot of comments, so we're going to go through and address some of the comments, and then we're also going to just show you what we're gonna do. So first of all, I got some comments about the irrigation systems. So people are like, oh, these irrigation systems are basically like having a third child or whatever. Well, yeah, alrighty, it had issues. So it turns out that the previous owner, even though we'd had an extended lease back, so they had the irrigation system completely shut off and I think that caused some of it to break. So I had the uh, lawn concepts guy come out and we had to spend $450 having a bunch of sprinkler heads replaced, a valve was broken, there was actually a leaking pipe, and some other issues. So that is now sorted. Okay, one thing crossed off the list. Another thing people ask is, hey, aren't you gonna need a big mower? Yep, we've got this big Ego electric zero turn mower and it's fantastic. And actually one of the things we're gonna do today is we're gonna relocate it to its new living space. Some of you are gonna bitch about it, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so the garage, yes, all of this stuff. So first of all, the one thing I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to get some blackout curtains for those windows because it may not seem like you want to get rid of natural light, but here's the problem, is I do a lot of my filming looking towards where the cars are gonna be. So basically this is gonna be the spot for whatever cool car we're working on, which means we're gonna be incidentally looking at those windows. We might have to put some blackouts. I might be able to get away with just closing the shades. But obviously for now, since I've got like these crappy little shop lights and that's it in the entire garage, we're gonna try and get as much light as we can in here because well, filming, you need light. Speaking of cars, what are we gonna do here? Well, I've already got a company that's supposed to come out and give me a quote on raising the garage door so it hugs the ceiling. We're also gonna get rid of the center lift and go with a side jack mount. So we'll probably put it right there and then, uh, well, I may have to go on that side, which means we're gonna have to relocate a plug. That might be close enough. I'm not sure, that's pretty far. We'll see if that's close enough to run that plug. If not, I'm probably gonna just tap off of that plug. In fact, I think I wanna do it anyway, just so it's on its separate breaker and then we'll run a new wire and then put a new plug into that area. And then I'm gonna do a side mount on this one as well, just because I like the clean look of not having the lift in the middle of the garage, but I don't think I'm gonna raise the ceiling. I don't think there's a lot of reason to do that. It doesn't really get me anything at this point. We can always do it later. We're gonna add a four post lift, hell yes. And there was much rejoicing. Oh yeah, I can't wait for that. Four post lift will go here. And of course, we're gonna put in Swiss tracks. So I actually have all of my Swiss tracks in the truck from the old house. We're gonna install those later today. What about all of this area? Yeah, I've got like all my crap just kind of piled up and in boxes. And I ordered a new cabinet system. As you know, I left the old cabinets in the garage and people thought I was crazy, but I knew that those cabinets would probably get beat up and destroyed in the move. In fact, we, ha we already had some casualties in the move. We lost some, well, we lost a little desk thing and a lamp and a few other things got broken. We expected that every time you move, stuff gets broken. I didn't want to have all those cabinets get moved because if they get like tweaked or whatever, you know, the doors won't shut right. So anyway, we're going to get rid of these gladiators. They're not bad, but um, I, I'm not in love with like the whole 
like diamond plate or whatever they call that, the little I don't know, pattern on that. Eh, it's not really my thing. So I've got a big new cabinet set on order. They said 12 to 16 weeks, so eh. The problem is, I don't know if I'm gonna put it here or here. I think I'm gonna put it here because if I put it here, the window's gonna be a problem. So I think it's gonna go right here, and then I don't, I don't know, maybe we'll put like a workbench or something here. I don't know, I gotta figure that out. So I'm up, open to suggestions. I'm probably also gonna get these shelves kind of moved out of the way once we get situated. I also am gonna take my big whiteboard. I think I'm gonna put the whiteboard somewhere here so that we, when we work on cars and stuff, we can actually track what we're doing, and I think that'd be pretty cool. We're gonna put a mini split right here. So that panel will come down, we'll put a mini split there. That would be pretty much the ideal location. And the reason is because this section of the wall has stone fascia, this section of the wall has siding. So I'd rather have to poke a hole through siding than the stone, and then we'll just have to run a new circuit from there. So we'll get a new 220 amp breaker put in, we'll get a new line run, have the AC put in, and then after that, we're also gonna put an insulation in the ceiling. Oh boy. And then as far as the ceiling goes and lighting, I have decided I am gonna paint it black like the old garage and we're gonna install some of the hexagon lighting. So you can see I've got two boxes of the hexagon lighting right there and a third one right there. So we're gonna need three kits, one for each parking spot. And then this garage is so big, I might even have to add some extra lighting just over there on that little recess and then maybe in the back right here. I think we'll be okay with that. I'm gonna have to take down these lights and I'm gonna basically install a plug where each of these lights are. That way we can plug into those for the lighting. As long as we're in here, something else we're gonna do. Okay, so I've got my DI water uh, filter and in here we have my water softener and my water heater. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take my DI guy, I'm gonna put a shelf right here, and we're gonna mount it in here so it's basically permanently affixed. The reason is because we can tap off of this line right here, which is awesome. So I'm gonna get soft water coming out. It will then be filtered through the DI, and then I also have, well, it's in a box somewhere in there, I have a uh, pressure washer that we'll be able to install in here. So when I want to wash a car, all we have to do is open up these doors, unfurl a hose out the garage, and then we can wash a car out there. And it's got like a 100 foot hose, so it'll be awesome. That'll be super, super, super sweet. I can't wait for that. That way I'm not lugging around a pressure washer everywhere. Oh, that's gonna be amazing. Yeah, we got tons of space in here, so should be no problem. So one thing I'm gonna do is keep this space open so that when I back in the pickup truck, we can actually open the tailgate. So you can see we've got plenty of room, uh, but when I pull it in forward, we can't open the pick up, uh, the tailgate. So I need to open the garage door in order to get the tailgate open. But if I back it in, I can get the tailgate open. So that's what we're gonna do is we're basically just gonna back in the truck all the time. But again, that means I need kind of this space right here to remain open so that the tailgate can fall down and we'll be able to get access. So that means when we're all done, we'll have a lift, we'll have air conditioning, we'll have insulation, we'll have great lighting, a cool ceiling, and Swiss tracks floors, and then we'll be able to put up some of the pictures and my neon lights and all that stuff and get that set up. So that's gonna be amazing. I think it'll look great. So that's kind of the plan for the garage. Let's move on into the house real quick, and I'll show you what's going on there. Good morning, Mo and Meg. Good morning. How are you? We're good. What do you think of the new house, Mo? He loves it. <laughs> he loves the backyard. What do you think of the new house, Meg? I love it. I'm a little bit overwhelmed with the amount of things I want to do. Like to do, it's a lot of stuff you want to do when you move to a new house, and you just have to remember to be like one thing at a time. Yeah, and, and the sad thing is the checklist is getting longer, not shorter. Yeah, I know. Right? It's like we chip away at it, and no, it like it's gets a, longer. It's a beautiful house, and there's nothing whatsoever wrong with it. But there's lots of things you want to do. Yeah. To, to make it your own and to enhance. So yeah, you just gotta slow your roll. But yeah. you know, Dan, you know, has no chill. No, no. And, um, and, there's, and to a certain extent, I don't either for all the things I wanna do to the house. Here we go. The house is, I'm gonna say 85% unpacked. 
So that's kind of the first thing we're really chipping away at it. So we've only been in the house after the movers for, this will be day three. This table right here, that leg, you can see is kind of at an angle. Yeah, they broke that leg, that sucks. There was also a lamp they broke. They damaged the wood floors in the bedroom. <sighs> oh, and they broke like uh, some other stuff. Anyway, uh, you can see kitchen's trying to get sorted. Living room's starting to get set up. We actually have a new couch on order because this couch, as you can see, is too small for this space. I mean, you got so much room. And here's the thing, it'll give us so much extra space in our room to do activities. So we got a bigger couch coming. Uh, we are gonna keep those two chairs, we like those. Thank you, Tyler, for helping me get the TV mounted on the wall. That was a total pain in the ass. One of the things I'm gonna do to the kitchen. So I, right now, we've got regular drawers and regular cabinet doors and i hate these because they do that they make this clunk well i ordered soft close hinges so graceful yes we're going to swap out all of the hinges on all of the cabinets and all the drawers to be soft close so i got a big old box of those right here lots of these hinges we're gonna do that yeah that's on the list in here we haven't really even started so dining room is kind of just pending right now we've got all of our art just sitting there waiting to be hung up that probably will be one of the last things we do i got my office set up so here we go we have oh there yes i have my desk set up the computer i've got my internet set up with a like a repeater or it's a, wire, a wireless mesh mesh yes that's it so that's pretty cool uh got the desk set up starting to get all the camera gear set up. Yeah, I have just a cluster. <laughs> you guys wonder what it takes to do these YouTube videos? Yeah, you need a pile of cameras and microphones and all sorts of crap. The computer set up, got this all going. So now I can actually edit this video that I'm filming right now. In here, we're gonna talk a little bit quieter because Ash is asleep. So this will be Ash's kind of playroom. So he's been taking over. We don't really have anything in the guest bed yet because we don't have a guest bed. We sold our old guest bed. Got my workout room starting to get set up. So the Peloton's going, got some weights. We're gonna actually put a Murphy bed that folds down so that when guests come, we can move this out of the way and have guests stay. Okay, going out back. We did something really smart. The old owners said, hey, you can buy all this furniture for 250 bucks. And we're like, hell yes. So super smart move. That was already here. We didn't have to move it. We got a TV out here. I bought a device that we can start playing that. I cleaned up the grill. It looks a lot better. Used it last night. Works great. Got the tiki torches working last night. Those were all messed up and had no fluid in them. Uh, we did have a leak on the pump for the pool. And so I put a temporary patch on it. It's just... It's still leaking, but it went from a large stream to a drip, drip, drip. So you can see right there, it's dripping. Yeah, so it's this pipe right here. So I'm gonna have to basically cut it off right there, replace all that section, and then probably cut it off again right there. So I think I'll be able to replace all that because um, yeah, this stupid thing has like a weird adapter. <sighs> yes, welcome to owning a pool and all the joys that comes with it. Oh, you guys aren't gonna like this, but I think I'm gonna store the lawnmower right there. Reason being is we have a little AC plug there and this grass is probably never really gonna grow because grow, it's kind of uh, in a weird place and I don't even think it's irrigated right here. I think what I'll do is I'll put down like pavers and we'll just park it there and then add like a little something in front of the gate so that people can't see it from the road. I think that'll work really well. That way I free up that space from the garage. A lot of people said, hey, you've got a child, you've got a pool, you should probably put a fence around the pool. We have one on order. So we're gonna install a fence all the way around the pool so that ash doesn't drown. That's a good idea. I like that. So that's great. We talked to the irrigation guy about the possibility of adding irrigation all the way out to the end of the lot. Yeah, they want like eight thousand plus dollars for that, which I understand that's probably about what it costs, but man, 
I don't know if that's worth it. The reason being that we kind of want to do that is, so like this is all Bermuda grass that's clearly been planted and it looks really nice. And then all of a sudden you can see it stops right about here and turns into kind of this natural Texas whatever grass. This stuff, yeah, it's kind of crunchy. It's not real soft. And then as you walk around, there are areas that have just tons of those little stickers or prickers. Yeah, like right there, see, right here. You got these damn things. Now these right now aren't too sharp, but they're gonna they're gonna harden and get really prickly, and so that's gonna suck for Mo and anyone that's walking out here, especially if you're barefoot. I think what I'm gonna do is we're gonna overseed more Bermuda and try and get some Bermuda to stick, but I don't think I'm gonna add irrigation because Bermuda can actually take some drought tolerance. Kind of my what I've read. So we'll just kind of keep this going out there and then we'll water it by hand for a while and maybe do like section by section over the course of maybe a year or two. So I kind of start here and work our way out and eventually hopefully turn it mostly into Bermuda. I don't know much about that stuff. So any of you that know about lawn and irrigation and, and how I can turn this into a more usable space so that no one gets prickers, let me know. Oh, you went out, Mo? Okay. Go on. Yeah, Mo likes the backyard. He's like, yes, I will go see my kingdom. Quite a few people mentioned, should we get a backup generator? We thought about it and initially that was the plan. I thought, oh, we're in the middle of nowhere. We need a generator. Turns out this neighborhood, so we had that big, big snowstorm, uh, what, last year? Walking carefully, you can see the truck uh, is now coated in a fresh layer of ice and this neighborhood never lost power. I don't think I'm gonna bother with a Generac at this point or any sort of backup generator. I might get like a little portable one because a house generator, those are like six, seven, eight grand plus installation. So you're probably talking like $10,000. Plus we don't have propane or natural gas here. We, we only have electric. So we're gonna have to buy a propane tank and bury it in the ground. And the ground here is a lot of stone. So burying a big ass propane tank in the ground is gonna be very expensive. I don't think it's worth it. So I think I'm just gonna get a little portable generator, maybe like a little Honda or something, just keep it in the garage and then if shit hits the fan, we'll wheel it out, start it up and plug in like the refrigerator and the pool pump. Cause those are kind of the things that like are mostly concerned. <laughs> Mo's having a good time out there. What'd you find Mo? What was out there? Come on Mo. Good boy. A couple of you have asked, how is the internet connection since you're in the middle of nowhere? Here's what's nuts. We have better internet out here than we did at our old home in the heart of Austin. I doesn't make any sense to me, but it's gigabit internet and it's only 50 bucks a month. I, I, I don't know. I don't understand that, but okay, cool. I will take it. So there you go. Great internet. I'm gonna make uploading videos like this so much easier and hopefully gonna make when I do my live stream a little bit better and have a little bit more stability. All right, YouTube, we have a little bit of a project. We're gonna have to move a few things out of the garage, but just a couple Swiss tracks to install. So this is enough for two garage spots. Yeah. It's a pain in the butt, but it's actually a lot easier than epoxy, much faster, and no chemicals, and when you're moving, you can bring it with you. So instead of spending thousands of dollars each time you move, well, there you go. So at the old house, I had the Swiss tracks. First time I did it with a checker pattern, second time I did it with like a red center and a black outline. I think I'm gonna go with a checker pattern again because I did kind of like that. So what we'll do is we'll have a black border and then red and gray checker and then we'll have three checker sections. So what I'm gonna do is install the Swiss tracks as much as I have so that we can see what we need to order. And that's really the big thing is I don't know exactly what I have and what I need. So we'll start off with what we got, install everything we can and then count it up and order the rest of the tiles and then just finish it out. All right, YouTube, first thing we're gonna do is just blow all the dirt out of the garage, then we'll throw in the Swiss tracks and come up with a good pattern. All right, YouTube, here's the question. Do we do black and red or gray and red checker? Hmm, and I'm thinking maybe we do gray border and then black and red. Either that or we do black border and then gray and red. Hmm.
All right, YouTube, we got as far as we could, and I knew I was gonna need more, so we still have 15 feet, eight and a quarter inches to go. And it's interesting is you can see because this garage is so much deeper, we didn't even get to fill up two car spots. That's how much less space there was in the old garage. It's really kind of crazy. We had basically one more row that we could have fit, but if you look, that would only get it to like half of the second spot. Pretty nuts. So I'm debating, I have this separator right here on this kind of center line where the door splits. I don't think I'm gonna put one on that side since it's just an open door. I think that'll look cool to just have it be open, but we'll put the gray trim on the edge. So we'll get that finished up, but yeah, that's, that's what we got for now. So obviously we have tons, tons of work to do on the house, on the garage, on everything. So hopefully you guys enjoy this sort of stuff. Let me know if you guys have any ideas of things that I should do. As long as we're doing this, we kind of have a reasonably blank slate, so I'm open to that. Movolino and the Ferrari logo and the Ferrari sign somewhere over here. And I guess the cabinets will go there and we'll kind of rearrange all that once we get those in 12 to 16 weeks. Yeah. AC, I just got notification is shipped, so we'll get that installed soon. I'll show you guys that. But I guess that's gonna do it for this video. So again, please like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Go visit normalguyssupercar.com. Buy your parts and services through us. We do appreciate it because that does support us and we want to hook you guys up. So that's our goal. Make sure you guys get good deals on parts and services. So check it out. That's going to do it. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to be doing a lot of cool car stuff. So you're going to want to stay tuned. It's going to be sweet. So I thought this video was over, but you guys will find this entertaining. I'm trying to put the truck in the garage. And since the stuff wasn't fully set, you can see. The truck grabbed a hold of the Swiss tracks and kind of threw them out the garage. Oh, it even left the tire mark. Sweet. So now I gotta redo all this. Oh, hey, that was dumb. Fun, fun, fun. Okay, reassembled. I think I'm just gonna leave that section not connected until we can do the whole thing because obviously that's a bad idea and it just puts a lot of torque on it, twisting it and stuff. So there you go. Don't do a half complete garage. That's dumb.